All right, this lecture, we're going to talk about the digestive system. <clears throat> the digestive system is primarily, um, actually, it's, it's got several functions. The first function is the ingestion of food. So this is uh, bringing food into the body so that it can be broken down. Then we have the digestion, which, which will start in the mouth with mechanical and a little bit of chemical breakdown. Uh, but most of the mechanical bre chemical breakdown is occurring uh, <clears throat> in the stomach and the small intestine. Uh, absorption, this is primarily done in the small, uh, small intestine. Uh, you have compaction, which is the large intestine. And this is just removing water uh, and concentrating anything that we didn't digest down into um, in compacted form. And then finally is the defecation, which is the elimination of any of the undigestible, indigestible food or substances. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, uh, the digestive tract uh, began is the, uh, the alimentary canal or the gut. Um, it does continue from the mouth through the large intestine this is not as an exciting of a uh, system as some of the others, um, but there is a lot. To, there is a lot of information involved in this. Um, uh, the uh, stomach and the uh, intestines are what we call the gastrointestinal tract, not including the mouth, pharynx, uh, esophagus. Then we have some accessory organs that aren't technically part of this, but they do help, like the teeth for mechanical breakdown, tongue helps in mechanical breakdown, uh, the salivary, liver, uh, gallbladder, and pancreas all help in mechanical, excuse me, chemical breakdown. Uh, the liver secretes uh, bile, which is stored in the gallbladder, and then the pancreas secretes many different digestive enzymes. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the anatomy of this, uh, again, uh, we have the mouth and the tongue. These are part of the oral regions. Uh, the salivary glands, there's a few of those. We'll talk about those in a little bit. <clears throat> the main portion here uh, coming from the mouth is the esophagus. Um, begins at the pharynx, the back of the throat. It empties into the stomach. And then um, from the stomach, we'll go to the small intestine and it's broken into three different parts. The duodenum, which is this first portion of it, uh, about a foot long. The jejunum, which is quite a bit longer. It's kind of hard to follow this because the small intestine does get so uh, convoluted in here and twisted around. And then the ileum, which is the last portion of it that ends up over here at the large intestine. We have the appendix, which is a blind uh, sac <clears throat> on the small, on the large intestine. The very beginning of the small, large intestine, excuse me, is the cecum. And then there's four main portions of it. The ascending, transverse, descending, and then the sigmoid colon. Um, of the large intestine and then it does also include the rectum and the anus <clears throat> layers of the digestive tract uh, with starting with the esophagus going through the intestines they're all pretty much the same they have three main portions uh, the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa. Um, the inside um, is the epithelium. And this lines all everything. Um, these uh, it's uh, these will secrete muc uh, mucus to help protect from abrasion as you're swallowing. Uh, it also helps them pr protect them from digestive enzymes and acids. Then you have a middle portion called the lamina propria. Uh, then you have a muscularis mucosa. This is a, um, a smooth muscle. You have another layer in here of the submucosa. We're not going to talk about it much. 
then they have um, an extern an outside muscle, an external muscle that's circular and longitudinal. And if you're talking about the stomach, they would have a transverse layer also. The serosa, this is areolar tissue. So it's very thin, very spread out. And this is so that uh, provides a um, pathway for blood vessels and nervous uh, tissue to uh, uh, integrate with all these organs in here. That's, so this is what we call the mesotheliolum. So if we look at the uh, lining of it, I believe this is the uh, esophagus. I'm not 100% sure. The inside of any tube, oops, let me clear that off. It's writing for some reason. The inside of any tube is called the lumen. It doesn't matter what it is. Inside of it is called the lumen. Inside this lumen, you have this thin layer. This is the endothelium, the endo, the epithelium, excuse me. This is usually one layer thick. You're going to have your um, uh, <clears throat> mucus uh, secreting cells in here. Uh, the next big portion around it is the muscularis mucosa. This is a smooth muscle to help movement of everything going around. Uh, your submucosa, on the other hand, this is where you're going to have your lot of vascularization, your arteries and veins. Uh, going through here, you'll have a little bit of nerves. You sh they show it over here, the yellow. Then you have your muscularis uh, externa. And notice that the th here's the ones that are going horizontal. And here's some that are going, uh, excuse me, this would be circular. So it's going around it. In a two dimension, it would look horizontal. And then you have your longitudinal uh, muscles. <clears throat> and these are really to help move. Uh, um, subject substances along uh, then you have your serosa on this outside edge and this is just connecting things and uh holding stuff in place it uh, is a little bit thinner so you can get some uh, your blood flow coming through as you see right over here uh, the means for them to get inside <clears throat> mesentery this is a tissue. It's a thin tissue that's covering most of it, most of your digestive tract. And these are really just extensions of the peritoneum or the wall. Uh, you'll have a dorsal and a ventral. Uh, but again, they're extensions coming around the, and they're covering. Visceral means they're in, uh, right next to the surface and they're covering the organs. Uh, the primary thing for these is that, especially with the small intestines, it keeps it from getting twisted because it is all wadded up inside of your um, abdominal cavity. And this keeps it from getting twisted and tangled. And then it also provides uh, a pathway for nerves and bloods to get to the organs. <clears throat> your dorsal mesentery extends from the uh, parietal peritoneum and it's a two layer membrane that is gonna cover the digestive tract. You also have a ventral uh, mesentery. This is a, a kind of an extension actually from the dorsal, but it's in the front. Uh, so it's on the opposite side of it. Again, double layered sheet membrane. This one is known as the omentum. Uh, the omentum may be attached, which is the lesser omentum, and it is attached from the uh, inferior side of the liver to the superior side of the stomach. Or it can hang freely, which is uh, the greater omentum, and it kind of hangs like a, a apron across uh, the abdominal muscles. If we were dissecting, you would be able to see this, or when we dissect, you'll be able to see this. So your, the mesentery, again, it's an, just an extension of that uh, wall going around. Um, where it gets into in the front of it, this is where we, we'll start calling it the ventral mesentery. It's really just an extension of that dorsal mesentery also, but this is where it'll attach between the stomach and the uh, liver or hang freely. 
<clears throat> not the best picture on this one, but here's a little bit better of a picture. The uh, we don't see the lesser momentum on the momentum on it, but the greater momentum here. This is pulled up, and normally this would hang down and cover all of these organs uh, from the ventral or anterior side. Again, you can see that mesentery, and there's lots of vascularization through. You see the blood supply. Uh, there'd be nerves going through there to help uh, signal uh, functions on it uh, with the small intestine over here and with the large intestine as well. Let's start with the mouth, the opening for it. <clears throat> the mouth gives us selective intake, so we get to choose what comes in. Our tongue um, acts very similar to our nose in that it can detect chemicals. So if you've ever noticed when you've had a cold or you're stuffed up, food doesn't quite taste the same because your nose and your tongue both affect um, the, the uh, chemical detections. Um, because at this point, when you're swallowing something, you put it into your mouth, you are still able to, uh, remove it. So if it's something offensive, something non-palatable, you can still remove it because once the swallowing, once you start swallowing, it is a reflex and it's just going to keep going. You, you can't stop it once you do start swallowing. Um, one I don't want to say unique thing, but one less common thing that is uh, uh, known with humans is that uh, when you swallow, it can get lodged and we can choke. Most organisms can swallow something and still breathe, um, but humans can't do that. All right, so digestion is going to begin with the maceration, which is chewing, and this is occurring with the teeth. And uh, cheeks and tongue help with, uh, deal with this also. Uh, <clears throat> you will also, I think it's on the next slide. Yes, yeah, so the next slide here is with the salivary glands. We have three types of the parotid gland, um, the submandibular, excuse me, yeah, the submandibular gland. And I guess it's right here, gland, not duct. And then the sublingual, <clears throat> so with three regions where we have salivary uh, glands. And what this does, it's going to lubricate, which is going to help in the maceration, the chewing of food. Uh, then the lubrication is also going to help for swallowing and letting it move down the esophagus without uh, in lots of abrasion on the esophagus. Salivary glands also add amylase, which is going to start the chemical breakdown of carbohydrates. Primarily starch is going to break them down into uh, simple uh, carbohydrates as sugars. The stomach, which is just a receiving chamber from the from swallowed food coming from the esophagus. Uh, this is going to add in um, that's going to help digestion because it's going to add hydrochloric acid. Uh, the pH of hydrochloric acid is one, approximately one. So it's a, a very concentrated acid. And your stomach lining is actually going to secrete uh, mucus in here to help protect the stomach from the acids. Uh, these acids help kill many organisms. Uh, this could be we're consuming something from the outside. So there could be all kinds of microbes that get in there. And it aids in digestion because uh, the acids are going to break proteins down into smaller, uh, excuse me, we're gonna add extra enzymes that are gonna help break down proteins. Uh, and the most famous one of that one is probably pepsin. And it's also going to have gastric lipases, which will break down triglycerides or fatty acids. Uh, notice though, I wanna point out to you, that this is the region where we have three uh, layers of muscular externa and <clears throat> these three layers of muscles help uh, 
the stomach contract and all these different layers to mix food up really good and break it down get to get the acids and the pepsin and the lipase all mixed around on your food to help break it down <clears throat> in the stomach again we have those mucus cells i was telling you about that uh, protect it from the enzymes and the acids there are stem cells in here the regenerative ones uh, because there are all these acids and enzymes and the friction of food going through it you are constantly losing cells so you got to make new cells uh, you have your parietal cells which are the ones that produce the hydrochloric acid uh, you have your chief cells which secrete the enzyme pepsinogen and anytime you see something with the gen on it that means it's in the inactive form um, <clears throat> the, the acid from the uh, parietal cells breaks this, uh, changes the pepsinogen into pepsin, which is the active form of the enzyme. And it's in this inactive form, so that way it doesn't start to digest the cells that are secreting it. So it has to have the acid being secreted. And then there have the enteroendocrine cells, which will secrete hormones based on the actions of the stomach. Your small intestine. Uh, the first probably foot is called the duodenum or duodenum. It's receiving things from the stomach. Uh, it's, this is where pancreatic juices are uh, entered into the digestive system. Um, it does have a lot of bicarbonate, which is a base so that uh, because it can't handle the strong acids like the stomach can. So it uses a base to neutralize the acids to uh, make the to bring it back to closer to a, a, a neutral pH. It'll also secrete, but we will also secrete bile from the gallbladder into this portion and bile uh, emulsifies fats that have been broken down from those lipases. Uh, the next portion of it is the jejunum, which uh, your textbook says is about the two and a half meters, depending on what textbook it is, it can be a very, but this is a long portion of the, the stomach. This is where most of your absorption is occurring. So this is where you absorb your nutrients. And the last portion is the ileum, which is fairly long, roughly three and a half meters. The uh, key thing in this one is that they have payer patches or pyre patches, which this suggests that it is uh, important in the immune function. It does not have as much muscle in it or blood uh, supply going to it. So it's less about, the uh, about absorbing nutrition, but more about the immune system. Because remember, this is just a hollow tube going from your mouth to your anus. And you can be absorbing, you can be intaking lots of uh, microorganisms. So you, uh, this is a very big, uh, it's very important to have those immune functions involved in here. So again, there is less absorption because you have less vasculation in there, vascularity and vasculation in there. I hope that's the right word. Inside of the small intestines, mainly the jejunum, um, this is where the absorption is going to be occurring. Um, where you have, uh, intestinal villi and then microvilli on it, on side of it. Uh, and what this does is it's going to increase the surface area. By increasing the surface area, we make it more um, efficient at absorbing nutrients. There's a lot of uh, vasculation going on in here, uh, the blood vessels in here flowing through it. And you need the thin layer of cells. And the microvilli is really, it's the increase in the surface area of the plasma membrane right up here, as you see the individual cell. So the microvilli is on the individual cell, excuse me, yeah, where the brush border is. And again, it's increasing that plasma membrane, which is going to increase the surface area of the individual cell to maximize the absorption of nutrients. Your large intestine, this is primarily to remove water and to compact undigested uh, material into feces. Um, 
it begins right at the very beginning of it is the cecum. And you have the appendix, which is a blind tube, and it has an immune function to it. And you have your ascending colon, your transverse colon, your descending colon, your sigmoid colon, your rectum, and then the anus uh, is the final portion of it down here. Again, uh, we store waste in here until we have a bowel movement, but primarily we're just talking about removing water and compacting into feces this is the primary function of the large intestine. At the anal canal, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the uh, rectum here is this main portion up here. This is internal and it has smooth muscles. So it's, it's muscles that we don't consciously control um, and uh, as we're mo removing feces. The uh, anus though, we have some uh, skeletal muscle involved in here, so we can consciously control when we have bowel movements or whatnot. But the, uh, that's really the end of the uh, rectus, the end of the digestive system. Accessory glands. Our first one will be the liver. The liver really secretes a lot of bile and it is stored in the gallbladder. Uh, the gallbladder is kind of underneath the liver. Um, sometimes it can be towards the front. Sometimes it can be towards the back. That's uh, beside the point. And it has a duct that'll drain the uh, bile, and that's called the bile duct, into the uh, duodenum for fat emulsification. The liver also produces most of our blood, pla uh, blood uh, plasma proteins, which help in clotting factors uh, and a few other things. And then the liver detoxifies drugs, removes toxins from our system. There's a lot of blood going here. So we have a, a hepatic artery, we'll have an hepatic vein, uh, and the liver is kind of a, attached to the inferior vena cava, really. Uh, it's got three lobes on it. <clears throat> you have your left lobe, uh, your right lobe, and then there's a small portion called the quadrate lobe. Uh, yeah. The uh, pancreas. The pancreas is part of the endocrine system, but it also has, so it's part of the hormone system, but it's also part of the exocrine system it had that secretes enzymes through ducts. Um, in the digestive system, which we're talking about it for, uh, we, it secretes lots of enzymes, protease for proteins, amylase for starches, lipases for fats, and nucleases for nucleic acids. It does a lot more, but since we are on the digestive system, we're just going to uh, worry about the <clears throat> uh, dig digestive enzymes that it secretes. And these again will be secreted into the small intestine where we do most, where we uh, complete the digestion and absorption of nutrients. So looking at these accessory organs, uh, the liver, you see the gallbladder is kind of down and underneath it. It will secrete the to the bile duct into the duodenum. The pancreas is a soft organ that sits behind, the stomach would be right here covering all this up. It sits behind it, all right? <clears throat> uh, again, it is also going to secrete into the duodenum to finish up digestion and aid in ab uh, absorption. Remember, this is about the first foot of the small intestine where this is occurring. And the jejunum is where most of the absorption is occurring. And that is the end of the digestive system.